Okay, you hear me. I just turned the volume up, pal. <clears throat> Good morning to Neil. Good morning, good morning. My sisters, y'all be proud of me. I hit record. Good morning to you, Mama D in the house. Good morning, Mama D. Good morning, Claire to Neil. Brittany, good morning, Jennifer, Linda. I feel like I need to say this is my first day of school and my name is Cheryl. As I'm calling each of you guys out. And we're so happy to have Mama D with us. Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Attorney Fullerton. Good morning, my sister. All right, it's 5.30, let's get started. <clears throat> what a quick, quick few announcements. I wanna say good morning to you. My name is Cheryl Oliver, Reverend Cheryl Oliver. This is just for my soul ministries. We are discipleship ministries. We are growing in our relationship with Christ. We are loving God, <clears throat> and I tell you, he is loving back on us. Um, I want to say good morning to you. I got just a few quick virtual ministry announcements coming up, but before I do that, just for my soul as a discipleship ministry, our vision is peace and purpose for the soul through truth, love, and relationship. Peace and purpose for the soul through truth, love, and relationship. Our vision is to love and serve everyone through biblical teaching, personal testimony, prayer, and mentoring for the glory of God, for the glory of God. So we are so glad to have you with us this morning, but we're just a group of individuals growing in our relationship with Christ one day at a time. <clears throat> for August, a couple of things coming up. I am so excited about this Saturday, August the 14th. August the 14th is our regular monthly teaching session. We are in the topic of prayer and we are on part three. Hopefully before Saturday, if you choose to, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is Just For My Soul Cheryl, or you can type in Just For My Soul Oliver. And my name is spelled C-H-E-R-Y-L. Um, because if you just type in Just For My Soul, you get a bunch of songs and everything else. But Just For My Soul and a portion of my name or my whole name, get to our YouTube channel, click playlists. And all of our videos are grouped in category where you can um, get to them easily. And so if you pop into teaching sessions, JMS teaching sessions, you'll be able to see part one and part two of prayer. This will be part three, 9.30 a.m. Saturday morning, August 14th. We are excited. And August the 21st, yes, third Saturday, August the 21st, we will begin our book study. <clears throat> and this is Discerning the Voice of God, How to Recognize When God is Speaking by author Priscilla Schreier. So please, 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 if you haven't gotten your books, it can get to you real fast uh, through Amazon. Please purchase your book. We are going to do two chapters at a time. We're going to summarize those chapters and we're going to talk about their major um, teaching points or what we took from it. I have a panel of ladies that are excited to get started um, with us. I, let me, as I said that, this study is not just for ladies. This study is for anybody with a soul, okay? How to discern the voice of God, um, recognize when he is speaking is for everybody that 
has spiritual ears, all of his creation. So join us, grab your books, <clears throat> go ahead and get to chapter two, one and two, and we're going to get started August 21st, 9.30 a.m. in the morning. All of these things I'm speaking of are virtual, and all of them are recorded and put on our YouTube channel. And then August the 26th, the fourth Thursday in August, 7 p.m., just for my soul, soul healing sessions, JMS soul healing sessions. It is something we started new in year three of our ministry. And um, let's see, our ministry year turns over in April. So this will be our third one. Each one has been very, very good to the soul. Good to the soul. Yes, it has. Um, we come online virtually from 7 to 7.30 for everybody. And then from 7.30 to 8.30, there is a private Zoom meeting with myself and a group of souls. <clears throat> and we really kind of get to the nuts and bolts and the meats and the roots of some things. And those hour sessions have been very fulfilling, um, very beautiful. So those are three opportunities you have virtually to grow with us. And the fourth one is what you're attending right now. JMS prayer moments every Wednesday morning, 5.30 a.m. Facebook Live. And again, Wednesday night at 9 p.m. conference call only. 9 p.m. is our conference call only. So those are four opportunities you have to grow in your relationship with Christ along with us. As we are discipling each other and growing, come along with us. All right. <clears throat> those are our very brief moments. I hope you got your Bibles, your coffee, your tea, something warm to drink, and we're going to get going this morning in our devotion. We are closing out the book of Galatians. Yes, we are. Chapter six, we are closing it out. And if you've been rocking with us for some time now, um, we've covered some territory in the New Testament. I don't know. Maybe this is about our fifth or sixth book that we've completed, studied, and prayed through. And I've always encouraged you to keep a tablet, keep notes, um, keep your Bible close, because to know God is to know his word. Why? Because he is his word. To say you have a relationship with God, to say you know the Father, the Son, you're, you're familiar with God in three persons, that's because you know his word. Okay? That's because you know his word. Let's not deceive ourselves or anybody else or listen to someone and be deceived because the word is not evident or the word is not a part of that person's nature or life. Hear me when I say that. To know God is to know his word. That's like saying you know somebody and you've only spent 10 minutes with them. No. You know someone when you spend time with them, talk to them, sat down and ate with them, especially if you live with them, um, been through ups and downs with them, hard times, good times, you know, you spend significant amount of times with them. You even don't really have to see them. You, they could be in another room. You could hear the tone of their voice and be like, what's wrong with you? No, ain't nothing wrong with me. Yes, it is. Quit lying. Something wrong with you. Come here. Let me look at you. So that's just how it is with God. To know him. To be in relationship, conversational relationship with him. It's because you know his word. This is how I learned his character. This is how I learned to, um, to have that small, still knowing on the inside and be like, I know God's telling me something. Well, you know that because you've already studied it in his word. You understand his character. You know what he wants. You know how he feels. You know the direction he has for man. And so then when he speaks inside of you and you have a knowing of right and wrong, and he is his Holy Spirit inside of you. Yeah, that's him speaking. And yeah, you know, because you know his word, you know his character, you know his heart, you know his temperament. 
you know his love. You know his peace. You know what he died for you to have. And you know exactly what he doesn't want. So I'm excited about today. We're going to close this out. Um, Paul today is just recapping what he means when he says, you are liberated and do not be caught up in the bondage of nothing or nobody or no tradition. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get to the, to the meat of what I want to say before I even read this word. Galatians is a book of um, spiritual liberation, understanding that you are justified and saved and belong to God by faith alone by his grace alone, because he decided to love you. He decided to save you. We have this liberty, this love, this grace, this mercy, this access to the throne because of who he is, not because of who we are. He already knows who we are. That's why he made a way. He already knows who we are. He already knows the fragility of our flesh. He already knows the uh, stumbling blocks of living in this fallen world and the things we get caught up in. So his liberation, his freedom, his grace, his love, his mercy, that's all because of who he is. And so Paul is trying to tell these individuals, live in the spirit, not by works of the flesh, in your spirit, you believe, you receive the gospel, you knew it was true, and it was all yours because of who God is and what Christ did. So how dare you, you allow traditional, um, these, these, these lawmakers, these law livers, this this Jewish tradition, these Judaizers come back in here and try to add to the gospel with things you need to do in the flesh, with works of, you know, keep this law, do this, do, and they had several, be circumcised, don't do this, and the law had a time, and the law had a space and in the world, and in the time beings of the Bible, where God says, now you're under grace, and the dispensation of grace and mercy because of what is Christ did. So Paul says, now that you're free, don't allow man to add back to you outwardly works of the flesh when God has done something powerfully on the inside of your soul by his spirit, by his love, freed you up. Now you want to add to it by works? Baby, you can't work for this. It's nothing you can do. You can't make God proud enough by your standards. If you circumcise, if you're not circumcised, if you do this or you do that or don't do this, Paul was like, really? You're trying to add to what Christ did? No, mm -mm, we're not going to do that, okay? And so Paul had wrote this letter to the region of Galatea, which was several churches along a particular uh, coast area. And so... He had to just remind them, you may be young in the gospel, but let's not be deceived by man. We got to add any extras to the freedom we got. This right here, the best thing going, because we're not good enough for this. This eternal love, this most magnificent love, this powerful God. So come on now. Let me read this because I probably have already taught it. Yes, Tanil say that. She says, baby, can't work for this. Indeed. Yes, Jennifer, grace and mercy. Come on now. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mr. Robinson. Pastor. There we go. I had to get my glasses. This little writing is little. That's Pastor Robinson. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes, Dolores and Dorothy, good morning to you. All right, now let's get on into this. Galatians chapter six, we're in verse 11. We're gonna end in 18. And we wanna praise God for completing another book in his word. And that's more growth 
and closeness with him. Let me see here. And it reads, see what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, we just talked about that, these would compel you to be circumcised only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Verse 13, for not even those who are circumcised keep the law. I love the way Paul read. He just puts it out there. He said, let me tell you something. We didn't get freed up with grace and mercy, just believing the gospel, faith alone in who Jesus Christ is. And these law-abiding folks is going to come in here and tell y'all, y'all got to add to it by works of the flesh. What Christ did, really? He says here in verse 13, not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Okay, Paul didn't even leave any interpretation to that. It just it's just like he said it. They don't even keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. Paul was like, they want to boast about what you've done on the outside. And the truth of the gospel has changed you on the inside. And y'all listening to this mess? Verse 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me. Paul says anything in this rebellious world, he did not mean the beauty of the earth. He did not mean the love of humanity. He, he meant the fallen state the fallen sinful state of everything that had been perverted by sin. He says, the world has been crucified to me and I to the world, okay? Paul was like, that's done on the inside. I boast about nothing except what Christ did. How dare I boast about any of my fleshly accolades? Paul was like, that don't mean nothing. Verse 15, for in Christ, Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Paul says in Jesus Christ, whether you circumcise, not circumcised, keep the law, don't keep the law, none of that means anything to him. Oh, but what does is a new creation from the inside, your mind, your soul, when it's been freed up by the truth of the Holy Spirit and who God is, who his son is and what his son did and his spirit that now lives on the inside of you caused you to think kingdom thoughts, caused you to release bondage in your heart, all types of foolishness. When it has done that on the inside, that's a new creation. That's what Jesus Christ is about. Not about who circumcised or who not circumcised. Uh-uh. He's about that new creation. Then it goes on to say in verse 16, and as many as walk according to this rule, the rule of Jesus Christ, peace and mercy be upon you and upon the Israel of God. Verse 17, from now on, let no one trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, it was a little shout. He was just, he just kind of shot at him right there. You guys are trying to make a resemblance or a, a significant statement about being circumcised or uncircumcised. But <laughs> I'm not going to let any of y'all trouble me because in my body, I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus. We could get literally, or we could stay figuratively as we talk about how Paul was marked. We're just gonna figuratively speak. Paul suffered for the gospel, for the truth, ostracized, persecuted, talked about, um, abused. He says, no, 
I'm, I'm marked for what I believe. I done been through a whole lot to hold up what I believe in the cross of Jesus Christ. So you think I'm going to let y'all bother me? You better move around. Mm -mm. No. Jesus says, yeah, the world hates you, hates me, they will hate you too. Don't worry about it. That persecution, you won't because that's for me. Then he goes on in verse 18. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Okay. I love this. He, 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 he's not saying no grace to any kind of fleshly works you're going to add to the gospel. Let his grace be with your spirit. That thing that's changing you down on the inside. Paul says that's all it is to it. Now, amen. Okay, so he had to remind them as time from time, my brothers and sisters, we got to be reminded. You take inventory. I want to talk now very broadly about freedom, what Christ died for us to have, liberty, freedom in his gospel, grace, mercy. A heavy price was paid. An ultimate price was paid. So you have to think about what has me bound. Size it up against the cross and put it where it belongs, under the cross. Is it a tradition that has you bound? A tradition of men? Is it a lie from the enemy that has you bound? Is it the fear of what people will think? Is it the fear of the truth that has you bound? Is it not being accepted, you know, that may have you bound? We have to think about what is keeping our souls and minds bound. I said this to my husband. We were um, just taking some time to relax this weekend and I'm approaching being 50 years old. I said, you know, it's a beautiful thing when fear loses its grips. And he was like, fear of what? I was like, fear of anything. It's very liberating. You let go of the outcome and you just start living each day as it is. And you just put the outcome in his hands. You know, sometimes just maybe what our children's future is gonna be, that can bind us up into anxiety and stress and what well, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. I'm, I'm even starting to let them boys go on now. You 21 and 26, you got to make some decisions for yourself. And however you decide, that's how it's going to be. And mama ain't going to be able to help you with that. That's freedom. So we have to think about what has us bound. I was like, no, I got to let this thing go. A price was paid for my peace. And why does it have me bound? Is it is because I want my way? Is it because I want a certain outcome? Is it because I'm trying to please something or somebody? Is it because I want to be perceived a certain way? What is it? What is it? I just finished um, um, my degree in my field of profession. I finished my third degree in my field of profession. And everybody's, oh, you're going to go on and get your doctor? Da, 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 da. I was like, no. Jesus is going to literally have to come back and tell me to go back to school. Um, and I don't, I say that jokingly because I have no desire. Have, but what I, when I think about, um, there are people that will um, go on and, and sometimes we even put stressors in my life. And I'm not talking about anybody else in our lives. I'm talking about me. There is, there is nothing nothing in that next level I desire, want to want to get to. And for me, that is such a sense of freedom. I don't, I don't need no more alphabets. I'm good. I'm good. No, I don't have to chase it. I ain't got to, not going to wrap it back around my neck. Now, if that desire, or that door is open, yeah, that's okay. But right now it's neither here nor there. I'll come and work for you. How about that? Um, 
But whatever it is, and I may be rambling right now, but whatever it is, we have to realize our freedom had a marvelous, miraculous, divine price. Yes, it did. Sometimes we create our own bondage. Sometimes we create our own traditions. This whole book, Paul went back through how in the world you gonna let the traditions of man weigh you down. And we gotta think about that and just blow it up in every areas of our lives. Now we have a standard. That's this Holy Bible, okay? So when I start talking about freedom and liberty, I'm not talking about man's rebellion against the ways of God. That is not what I'm speaking of. I'm not talking about your own truth. No, because you are not your own God. This is what I choose to be my standard for living. I'm talking about freedom and liberty throughout the pages of this Bible. And it is great. It is marvelous. It frees the mind. It frees your expectations off of humanity. It frees your expectations off of institutions. This is the only standard. And even when we don't meet all of these, he says, you know what? My grace and mercy got you covered, child. If you know you're wrong and what you did is wrong, my spirit didn't tell you was wrong. Repent and come on back. Even this is better than man's standard. Because baby, man will ostracize you for life. Jesus won't. So when I talk about freedom and liberty and truth, this is the dotted, this is the finish line right here. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that rebellious state of man in these times. I can be who I want to be or what I want to be and love what I want to love. And I ain't talking about all of that. I'm talking about the freedom we got through grace and mercy of Jesus Christ and obedience to his word. Ain't nothing in here, Genesis to Revelation, written to hurt me. Not it. It's all written to keep me free. Have me live in peace right between grace and mercy. And it frees me from me. How about that? So Paul was saying, don't let them tie y'all back up with this mess. Come on now. The gospel has set you free and you believed it. So take that and let it land where it lands. I hope it sits and marinates. But most of all, I hope in your mind and in your heart, you find some peace. In the name of Jesus. I think that probably was my prayer, but I'm just going to formally pray. Because you know, prayer is nothing but conversation. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you've heard us talking today. We got some comments we're going to read on here in a minute, Lord. We just want to thank you for loving us enough to untie us from legalism, from the standards of man, from confusion, from the bondage and slavery of sin. That's the greatest liberation you've given us from the bondage and slavery of sin. So far, thank you, Father, for making a way. We love you. And let us, and, and being free, let us not put anyone else in bondage. Let us not put anyone else in some type of mental bondage or self-inflicted standard of bondage. Nobody because we've been made free by you, oh God. Father, so may our words, our actions, our attitude, our thinking, our relationships glorify you. May we truly be living sacrifices. And when the world sees us, they see you. That's my prayer today, God. There's so much going on. We need you in so many arenas of life. So God, come and do you right on the inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, y'all go and have a wonderful day. It is six o'clock. I'm gonna go and do the same thing. Tanil says, living in peace, right between grace and mercy, amen. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Pastor say, hallelujah.
Yes, Mama D, we stuck in tradition what somebody else said. And that, and that, that, that tradition is, is deep. Yeah, it is. The only standard is the Bible. That's the only standard. That's it. Come on now. His word and his word alone. Oh my God. My son is of age now looking for his own, um, you know, um, church and, and, um, and his space in 26. I say, this is all mama have for you as a 26 year old man. Two things it's gonna need, baby. He was like, what is that mama? The truth, the word of God and the spirit of God. Other than that, I don't care where you go to church. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care how they dress, what they do. As long as it ain't no foolishness, no, no, no bondage, okay? You got the spirit of God and you got the complete word of God with nothing added to it. Go on and do you, boo, because it's your life. And he just looked at me and smiled. But let's, let's, we, we, if you're a believer, you're free. Stay free. Stay free. Don't even put yourself in bondage. I do also do marriage counseling. I do biblical counseling. A portion of it is marriage counseling. And when couples come, if I can smell bondage, I just go in. Because sometimes another person and maybe their ways or their attitude, you know, they try to control factor. Baby, no, no man or no woman comes under the power of fear and control by any other human being, especially in a marriage where we are out to get the best out of each other. So yeah, this, this thing is a bondage detector because I've had to detect so much of my own. You let go of that fear, honey. You freed. So I pray that just these nuggets of wisdom and this love and this truth of the word has landed somewhere in your heart and in your soul. And I'm just trying to cut this thing off, but it's just several forms of bondage. We could be in bondage materialistically, alcohol, drugs, uh, pornography. There's all kinds of things that ask us, but Jesus died for us to be free. Die. Okay? And I say this with such passion and I just kind of keep digging at it is because I've had to be free. It's some stuff I'm still trying to free myself up from with the truth, with the love. Little girls trying to look a certain way. You know, and all of them look the same way, the same length of hair, eyelashes this long. Why? To please who? And if it's yourself, you bound. Is that stuff about as artificial as it comes? Come on, y'all. We got to do better. A mighty price was paid for us to be free. That's it. I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to try to go out here before the sun come up and go walk or something. Then I got to go to work. So be blessed. You all have the announcements of what's coming up. Hope to see you 9.30 a.m. Saturday morning. If you miss it, no worries. It is recorded on YouTube. Go to our YouTube channel and you can look at, look at any of these teachings. We have completed the book of Galatians. Join us next Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. And we're just going to see what book of the Bible the Lord puts us in next to read through and pray through. In the name of Jesus, I want you to always remember God is truly the lover of your soul. Bye for now.